All right, guys, so we're gonna do a video on servicing the shock on the 2023 300 XC, uh, cause it is about time, about 50 hours. Also, I have some new settings I wanna try out uh, from TBT to see if they're any better than the way they are now. <clears throat> so to start this video though, we're going to time how long it takes to get from this a completely, you know, whatever rideable motorcycle to the shock in my hand. I'm gonna set a timer here on the screen for you guys. Uh, and we're just gonna see how long that takes. Ready, set, go. Time. That wasn't bad. I'm not exactly sure what it was. You'll see it here on the screen. Um, that wasn't bad considering I had a little issue with my link guard um, just because the plastic pushed, anyway, whatever. Caused a little bit of a slowdown, uh, but now I'm gonna clean this thing up and let's take it apart. All right. So we got her cleaned up uh, a little bit. We'll do a lot more cleaning here once we get more apart. Uh, but now next thing is get the spring off, which this spring is a little tight because it's a 260 uh, instead of the 240 that uh, comes on these things. Uh, but it's all I had when I first did this. Now it's easier to find a, a 240 or 245 spring. Guys, uh, as with all these KTM shocks that have this plastic, um, or it's a metal ring onto the plastic uh, adjuster, you really wanna go easy when you tighten those things down. So it's super loose, which is what it should be. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let the nitrogen out of the bladder. This will also be good, guys. Bike has 45 hours on it. So I think the shock, since we uh, valved it, has about 40 hours on it. Now you can see exactly what oil looks like with 40 hours on it. All right, I got a little thing to help push this shock down because they're kind of stiff. There we go. Piston, everything looks perfect, shiny, brand new, which is exactly what we want. So now let's clean this up really good. We're gonna go over to Zach's world and we're gonna valve it. All right, guys, got the shock shaft here. I'm gonna take this apart. We're gonna lay everything out and I'll show you what that looks like, what the shim stack kind of looks like. All right, guys, so i lay it all out in order. All right, so there we go. Now, quick, I'll just kind of give you a rundown real fast of what this looks like. These are the face shims. Those are what go up against uh, the piston. <clears throat> and that's like your initial resistance to it moving. And then we have a crossover shim here, and then we have the rest of the shims diminishing in size. Um, that flex and allow for, uh, and we're gonna be tuning all that. Uh, then on the rebound, same idea. These are the face shims, there's crossovers there, and we're coming this way back to you know, the top. So now I'm gonna look and see what Travis has spec for this. This is a test shock, basically. We have no idea how this is gonna work. <laughs> um, but based on the new linkage ratios and all that stuff, he thinks that this might be really good. So. Uh, I'm going to clean this all up, get the spec out, and we're going to figure it all out, and then uh, we'll start putting it all back together. All right, guys, we got that built. This is very different from what was in there. So I'm excited to try it out. Uh, the compression does not have a crossover, so that's interesting. Um, the, uh, they, we normally do run one, but it's, I'm excited to try something new. And then the, uh, the rebound was, is, is a lot different too. So um, now we're gonna get the compression adjuster and go there. So we gotta pull that out. That's the high speed compression. Zach's teaching me. So, here is our high-speed 
uh, a compression adjuster. So we're just going to come in here. We're going to ease that nut off. Oh yeah. Clean this sucker off really good. Take this back over and lay it out just like on the other ones. All right, so we're doing something crazy. We're taking this spring out of play, but we're gonna lay it out in order anyway. All right, we guys, guys, we have that all built. Now, like I said, this is super different. We're running without a high-speed adjuster, so that's what this is all about. Because what would happen is on this, when you turn it, it would push in on this spring, which then pushed on this that pushed up against the outside face shim, uh, pr providing more pressure to keep it from wanting to go in and out. So we're going to not run with a high speed. We're going to check this out. Now, I do not know how this is going to go. It could be awesome. It could be terrible. Travis isn't 100% sure either, um, but we want to like test and see because if you just get into the same rhythm, the same things, you never find out if you could be better than what you are. So that's what we're doing here at TBT is testing stuff, trying to make a better setup than what we already had, which was already really good. All right, guys, got everything all valved. I'm excited to try something. This is so different from what it was. I'm excited. I mean, I liked it before, but again, you don't know what you don't know. So gonna try it out now we're gonna bleed this thing reinstall dry and then we're gonna chalk this up and we're gonna fill it with shock oil through the compression adjuster area before we put the compression adjuster then we'll bleed it the rest of the way our KOIB shock oil all right so now that's getting pretty close to full I'm just gonna cycle this through all right guys if you've watched some of my other videos you know that doing it this way does take longer than hooking it up to a uh, vacuum pump but vacuum pumps are crazy expensive and um, honestly this works just fine it just takes a little time that's why i usually have something else set up to do while i let the bubbles come up we tap on it we move it up and down um, and then we finally bleed it with uh, bleed cup and this um, you know out of this hole so just going to keep pumping up and down get all the air bubbles out of there make sure it's all nice and happy we'll put the compression adjuster back in uh, one of you guys asked uh, on our previous video uh, how you do that without getting air in it well you do get a little you first of all you overfill it and you do a pretty good job of not you know getting air in there but then the rest of it comes out through that hole all right guys so we got most of the air out of there now this res this hole right here is over full on purpose it's going to make a bit of a mess but we have our absorbent pads down i'm going to take this we're going to drop it in there it's going to like i said it's going to overfill it's all right but we're still, there's still air in here and we're gonna get it out. Now we rotate it so we can go straight up and down. I'm gonna move the vise so there, it's kinda hanging on that, but then also squeezing. You want to be able to put it at a little bit of an angle so that the bleed cup is straight up and down. And we're going to fill it with shock oil. And now we just pump it. And we're going to get lots of air out. And if you're wondering, so this is higher than this, but when you 
push it, it forces everything and it goes up and the air comes out. And then as you pull back in, it's just pulling fluid, straight fluid back in. Another thing guys, when you're doing this, you want to take a hammer every now and then and kind of hit the clevis as you're doing it because that helps to flex those shims and get any air bubbles out of those shims. There's a bunch of air. We're done here. When you can cycle this thing, this heart like down quickly and up quickly and get no bubbles, I don't know. I wait till I get five or 10 strokes with zero bubbles, then you're good to go. So good about that. And we're gonna check it one more time, just so you know. All right, so now, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna empty it into All right, I've had other people ask about this. So when we take this off, it's gonna expose this to air uh, before I put the screw back in. Yes, it does, but when you pull this off, it's gonna be over full. It's gonna be coming out basically. Um, and this is also where you have to unscrew the uh, vacuum bleeder. So if you have a vacuum bleeder, you're still unscrewing this and leaving it open to air. So I'm gonna leave that straight up and down. Gonna be... ready with our bolt and we're just gonna go right in like that now I'm gonna take it over to Zach's where we're gonna put 150 psi in here because that's what this spec calls for uh, then we'll put it all back together there you go, guys. There is the new, what do they call this thing? A exact something, I don't know. It's the new, the brand new shot from KTM. Um, this one already has a bladder kit on it. That's why that was so easy. Didn't have to set uh, free piston length or anything like that. So we're all good. Get it all cleaned up, reinstall it on the bike. And make sure you subscribe, guys, because I will be reporting on whether or not this works. This, honestly, I don't know. Travis doesn't know for sure. I mean, he feels pretty good about it, but... We don't know, this might not be a very good setting, uh, but I'm gonna find out uh, and I will report back to you guys. Sorry guys, real quick, I forgot to uh, show you how we check uh, one last time. I'm gonna push this down on the ground and then when I bring it back up, I'm gonna be checking to make sure there's no clickies, no weirdness as it goes up. That was perfect. So we know we're good. Now I'm gonna put it back on the bike.